Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. We're going to be talking about the uh, eradication of polio with the efforts of Rotary itself, and we have with us an expert, Jim Lewis. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Thank thanks, you, Wade. Thanks, thanks for, for joining the us. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your personal life. What, what did you do? What do you do? Okay. Uh, well, I was born in 1942, so there's my age. <laughs> okay. Uh, came down with polio myself at the age of five and a half in 1948. This is before the vaccines came out. And uh, my father was an athletic coach and All-American football and baseball player. So this, in a way, really hit him hard to see hit my, myself and my brother came down with it, too. But uh, lived with that and uh, went on to Burbank High School and then went on to Cal State Northridge and USC and uh, spent uh, 38 years in public education, all at the high school level, teacher, coach, administrator. Great, great. And how did you get involved with Rotary? Good question. Uh, most Rotarians are asked to join Rotary by somebody, but in this particular case, I asked our superintendent, who was my boss, if I could come to a Rotary Club meeting because I was working with high school students, putting them in internships and in job opportunities for them when they were juniors and seniors. And I thought by networking in Rotary, I might be able to meet people in the business community. And uh, so I asked Kathy if she would be, a, you know, take me to a meeting, I did. And uh, a couple meetings later, I asked her if I could join. So that's where it started in Simi Valley. Simi, Simi Valley, Valley at Simi Valley Sunrise. Great, okay. Great club there. <laughs> Great club and doing an awful lot for people in the community and around the world. So um, let's get back to the uh, polio efforts okay. then because you are one of the experts worldwide of the, uh, what we're doing for polio right now. Tell us a little bit about the disease and how it affected you personally. Well, okay, the disease really, uh, this disease and the virus that causes this, the polio virus, has been around for thousands of years. I mean, this isn't something new. I mean, if you, look to, if you went to Egypt, if you went to the pyramids, you'd find a, in the hieroglyphics of people, you know, using walking sticks and, and had withered legs and so forth. So it's been around a long time. Uh, living with a disease is one that's a challenge because everything they told us to do as, child, as children was probably just the opposite. In other words, work out your muscles, you know, exercise. In turn, what, it's found out, what they found out really in the middle 80s is that it was wearing our muscles out. And, and people like myself uh, in the age group were finding uh, that the muscles were becoming atrophied and weakened, and uh, they called it post-polio syndrome. Right. So uh, the disease has been around an awful long time. It's really waterborne. It's, uh, it's found in, con in contaminated water, and it is uh, passed on through the body and manifests itself, and then it is excreted away in the feces and goes into the water, and pretty much that's the life cycle. There's three types of polio, type one, two, and three. We haven't seen type two since 1999. Uh, type one it have been the only types that we have seen in the last couple, three years. And type 1, they um, call the wild polio virus, correct? Yes, both, both 1 and 3 are wild polio virus. They were all wild polio virus. But uh, uh, it's, it's there, but we've vaccinated so many children and so many people over the years. We're making great, great project, pro you know, progress. Good, good. And how did Rudy get involved with uh, this good, effort? That's a great question. Through through a large grant that was given in the Philippines, 1978-79, the thought was if we could test and vaccinate six to seven million children in the Philippines, if it was, if it was successful as we thought it would be, using the oral polio vaccine that was developed by Albert Sabin, that it would be successful. It was so successful that it, Rotary moves a little slow, as you know, but in 1985, Rotary took it on as a number one project, and that's where we've been going ever since. And uh, that's how it kind of began. And it's, at that particular time, in 80, 1985, there were 125 countries that were endemic of polio. 
They had never eradicated it. Today, we're down to two. In um, the counts, I would say, the cases that you had of the... Uh, when when Rotary started, somewhere between 350 to 500,000 cases of paralytic polio. Paralytic, remember that only one in 200 are actually paralyzed. In my case, my brother's case, my brother was not paralyzed. He had polio, he was very sick, but he wasn't paralyzed. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move a, a muscle, I couldn't move my hands, I couldn't do anything. So we've progressed to the point now, which is actually a miracle, that we're down to 19 cases as of July 20th in two countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. As opposed to thousands in a day. Thousands and thousands, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, actually, I was one of the fortunate ones also. I had non, the non-paralytic polio type that. as a child, so mm -hmm. uh, I was very fortunate, one of the very and fortunate you, ones. And where were you when you... Yep. Santa Barbara, California. Santa Barbara, see. Uh, yeah, I was in Burbank. In Burbank. Yep. So it happened here. Sure. When we talk about uh, Rotary's efforts, and this being the number one priority of uh, right. trying to eliminate this, tell us about how huge, how global that becomes, and what this effort actually has meant to the world. There hasn't been a country in the world that really, over the thousands of years, that has not been affected by polio. A disease that, that not only affects the child for the rest of their child's life, but their parents, uh, the parents no matter where they are in the world. And when Rotary took this project on, it was promised really that there would be no children left that would ever come down with this disease. And that was their motivation and their passion. And as you know, when Rotary takes on a project, they're like a pit bull, really. They're not gonna give up and they're not gonna quit and they're not going to uh, let up. And quite the challenge when we consider where we have to travel and go to to give vaccines. But Rotary took it on as a major project and still their number one objective is to eradicate the disease. So I say that Rotary, being in over 210 countries and territories in the world, it's a united front. It's like a united game plan to win the war on this particular disease. We're united worldwide and it's working. It is working. And if you look at the persistence that Rotary has had starting in 1985 to now, 30, 31 years, right. um, that persistence, uh, sure. do you know how much the financial efforts have been? Oh boy, over two and a half billion dollars yeah. have been contributed. Uh, Rotarians in our district 5240, for example, last year we were number one in the world. The last couple of years, we've been right up there it, it, you know, uh, for our contributions that uh, have fundraisers, clubs, uh, our district is, is a big heart and, and so do the other districts uh, in the world, especially in our zone. And uh, a game changer that really helped was in 2007 when Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation contributed $100 million and asked Rotary to do another 100 million, and we did 200 million. So, you know, since then, there's been just millions and millions of dollars. And I have to say that countries like United States and Japan and Korea uh, and many of the countries around the world have also contributed to this great effort. Including India. Including India, India of India's course. India's been uh, very yes. generous as recently. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. right. The cooperating organizations, um, for example, UNICEF is, is some, the Gates, uh, the Gates Foundation, right. other ones, World Health Organization, all of those are, are key players uh, in the world right. scene. And uh, do you know or have you ever been involved with some of those meetings, uh, the outcomes of those and the plans that they set? Uh, let's, let's put it this way. In 1985, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative was started. The major players were World Health, they're the administrators. UNICEF, they're mainly the vaccinators 
along with volunteers. CDC, the US CDC, Center for Disease Control, are those that are chasing those viruses. And then, of course, Rotary, we're the cheerleaders. We are the movers and shakers worldwide to bring this to the forefront. Uh, and then, of course, came in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And so, therefore, with those combining efforts of those organizations, we, we have a united front. This disease and this virus is surrounded. It's not going to get away. And uh, my, uh, my involvement really was working with World Health, working with UNICEF, giving vaccines, all of those vaccines for me in India. And I've been on seven NIDs, and, uh, and that's where my efforts have been. And our past district governor, Otto Estelle, told me and told many that if we could eradicate polio in India, that we will get polio eradicated all around the world. And it's, it's coming true, his prediction. We have a, a campaign called The End Game. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The End Game was, was um, established by these organizations that I mentioned. Uh, and it was to put together a game plan similar to, say, a business plan or a football coach that has a, 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 has a, a, a plan for winning games a, or a teacher that has a lesson plan. The end game is designed to, to eradicate the disease within five years. By 2018, if, if all works well and we're reevaluating at all times, this disease will be eradicated before or at least by 2018. So it is really a, like a game plan, it's, a game, it's an end game, and uh, our Rotarians and our people around the world need to understand that we do have a strategic plan to eradicate this disease. Now one of the most recent uh, reports that we got on the polio cases worldwide, uh, paralytic polio cases, recently showed up with uh, 19 as a total for the year, but with zero being reported in that period of time in recent time, which was, I believe, about a one-month process. Right. We've, that is uh, huge news. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Every week, World Health, the World Health Organization puts out its statistics and puts out their news as to what is going on in this game to eradicate polio. The last four weeks, we have had no cases of the wild polio virus type one in Afghanistan or Pakistan. We have had no cases in Nigeria, which was the last country that was in the endemic. Recently, May, in the, in the middle of May, about a month period there, we switched with 155 countries from using oral polio vaccine type two in a trivalent that would cover one, two, and three, we switched to a bivalent of type one and three. It was felt that in rare cases, some children had come down with type two polio. So we've eliminated pretty much oral polio vaccine in most of the countries in the world. And eventually we're going to be going to an inactivated or an injectable salt vaccine uh, in the, we're, we've already started it uh, and uh, ahead of schedule. And I think this has been a major game changer also for these good, these good numbers that we're coming up with. Now in 2010, India was actually um, administering uh, a bivalent, uh, one in three, but orally. Right. That seemed to be what they considered as one of the reasons why India became um, polio free. Absolutely. At that point in time. So this right. There were some countries that switched. They switched out with with a with the trivalent to a bivalent, and it, it and it certainly was a game changer. And I have to say this about the Indian people. 
they are as passionate about eradicating polio as we were, our families, our parents, in the United States in the 50s when the vaccine came out. Without a doubt. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. You can see that when you're there. Uh, yeah. The efforts are uh, non-ending. They, they oh. work it and fight it the whole time, so it's great. Yeah, right. I definitely give them credit for that. Oh. Tell us a little bit about what's going on currently, current times. We, uh, we, we talk about the immunization process. How about those that are afflicted, the post polio syndrome people, those that have the crippled disease that have residual effects from that? Are there any efforts that we're doing to try and fix that, help them out? You know what? Uh, in America, of course, we have hospitals like Rancho Los Amigos in Downey that have a whole polio war, a polio unit. And I'm a patient there. And in America, we're, not, we're, we're seeing fewer polio survivors like myself that need help, but, but we're seeing quite a few from other countries that come and need it. And worldwide, there are thousands and thousands of polio survivors that are suffering from post-polio syndrome. And if we can't get the word out to the families and to these folks, they will suffer like many of us have. So my effort, really, as we eradicate, and I was a speaker at District 3291 in 2013, was to ask the Rotarians in District 3291 to, to join with District 5240 and do something for those left behind. So we put our heads together, we, 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 we did our, gathered our data, we put our our committees together, and we came up with a global grant to address exactly what you asked about polio syndrome, but, but even polio corrective surgeries, uh, wheelchairs, calipers, and so forth. Their next phase is to go to vocational training, job placement, and literacy education, because so many of these polio survivors are crawling in the streets, and not only children, but adults, yeah. Yeah. and that's unacceptable. So. Uh, my, my passion and my move is, is to go towards this and to take it around the world and to help those survivors. We have to. And we have to use annual fund money for our grants to do this. Um, we're not going to just eradicate this disease and walk away. We're going to eradicate this disease and then we're going to help all of those that are suffering. And uh, it can be done. And it is being done and it will be done. Now, district-wise, so for those viewers that don't uh, or aren't familiar with uh, district designations, 3291 okay. is located in... It's, in... it's in Kolkata, India. Okay. Right. Good. They have 124 clubs in their district. Oh, great. Yeah, if you're a district governor, it'd be a little rough to <laughs> reach all those. Right, right. It's a big district, and it's a good district. So with that, uh, your efforts, I know you've been going to different areas of the country, of the world, speaking on behalf of this. Tell us a little bit about your efforts and what you're doing right now for, for uh, Rotary well, Polio Plus initiatives. I'll talk to anybody at any time about polio. When I joined Rotary, I had no idea that polio eradication was anything to do with Rotary. And it was soon after that I read Rotarian magazine and I, I heard our presidents talking about it there at the club, and uh, it started out that way, really. He asked me if I wanted to go on an NID, and I said, I have to talk to both bosses, my wife and the superintendent, and they both said, you have to. So that's where it started. And uh, uh, to, to give you a little rotary moment, uh, I was with a team that was going to Muradabad, there were a thousand cases of paralytic polio that year. And to be honest with you, I thought I was going to die on the highway, but going between <laughs> New, New Delhi and Moradabad, they were just absolutely crazy exactly drivers. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, and uh, eventually we got to one of the booths, and there must have been 500 kids in line to get a vaccine. And I. Uh, here comes this little kid in big brown eyes looking up at me. I gave her two drops and a little prayer, and I said, this kid's not going to get the disease that I had. And I couldn't get enough of them. <laughs> and that was my page. That's where it started. And I got on the phone that night. I called my wife, Carol, on the phone, and I said, you're not going to believe it, but I got vaccines today for the little kids. And she says, I want to tell you something. 
your granddaughter, Delena, was given vaccines the same day. Hmm. She was the same age as this little kid. Right. So it's kind of gone like that. It's kind of like, you know, being on this, uh, on a uh, moving train. Uh, I've been district, I've been speakers at district conferences and dif district, uh, you know, uh, district assemblies and, and different things like that in different parts of the country. And uh, we're working right now, I'm working right now on a, on a summit that'll be held in the first week in March uh, to address post-polio syndrome. Uh, and hopefully we're gonna be able to take the information that we're working on around the world and help other countries and other folks working with Rotary, working with the Rotary Foundation to, you know, to help those that are suffering. But that's, that's where I am now. Good, good. So, now we have a couple of pictures that you sent in for us. Uh, let's okay. take a look at those. The okay. first picture is with you. I believe it's with the doctor there. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that uh, story? I sure will. That was in 2007, I believe. We were at St. Stephen's Hospital in, in New Delhi, which is a, a wonderful hospital doing an awful lot of good things for polio survivors. And they took us down to where they're building the calipers, which polio survivors need to keep st put strength in their legs and to, to give them stability. And they're actually molded to the muscle and to the, their legs, in this case with me, uh, uh, to the muscle at that time. Uh, and so this gentleman was asking me about it and I pulled up my pant leg and showed him my brace. They were very interested in <laughs> seeing what, uh, you know, how they had done it. Now, since that picture, I have braces on both legs now. Mm, okay. Very good. And uh, the next picture you have shows you with a group there. Yes. Actually administering the vaccine, correct? That's correct. We were in, uh, on this particular picture, I was in the town, in the city of Kampur. It's right on the Ganges River. And they also had an awful lot of cases. And we were going door to door after our one day of, of having our booths all over the city and all over India and giving vaccine at the booth. And most of the booths are, you know, are, are manned by Rotarians and by UNICEF workers, volunteers. And uh, we were going door to door because many of these kids are not uh, able to go to the booth. So we go to, board, go to door to door and uh, we give them vaccine. And I just happened to mark my finger with purple I, ink. I, I see that, yeah. Yeah, purple ink. And this is what we do. So I'm, I'm showing in, in this picture that we're gonna give two drops of, of Sabin vaccine. And after that, you see the gentleman here, uh, right across from me, has a pen, pen in his hand. And it's purple ink, and he's marking the little kid, little finger with purple ink. That means that that child has been vaccinated. And the ink will stay, you know, for a couple, three weeks. And uh, that's what I was doing. <laughs> that is great. Now, those uh, pens, they take very good care of. Uh, yes, they do. There's, well, I guess, one specific person assigned to each of those pens and each guards that with his life. Well, yes, he does. And, and not shown in this picture, but right, right on this side of the picture, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a person, a UNICEF worker, that is keeping track of how many vaccinations have been done in that particular day. Right. And uh, so they, they've, they're accountable. They are definitely and doing they're that, definitely yeah. accountable and they count them up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sure. That's good. Now, did you go to any of the houses to do the door to door and do the chalk marking? On, on we the did the chalk marking on every single one. And by marking the, the door with the chalk, we know when the last uh, vaccines were coming through there when the last NID was, was held. In India, there was, a vac there was an NID every single month, usually the last Sunday of the month. And so we could see if the vaccinators had been to that particular house. And, and the people do, are, are so conscientious, they do not erase that. They yeah. do not erase it True. because they're just as passionate about it. I mean, I have seen children, Wade, where the parents have held up their child with their legs that are flaccid and tears in their eyes. This is, 
Well, I could see my parents doing the same thing. So it's, yeah. it's very, very important. It is very important. Um, unfortunately, that you know, we're late for some of them, but with the numbers right. that we're coming through worldwide, it's very promising that, right. that we'll see right. a, an end to this very soon. What would happen, and uh, we've got a little bit of time for this one, do they anticipate if, in fact, Rotary were to discontinue this effort? We talked about the disasters, the catastrophes, how quickly this will rebound back, this disease. Do you have any numbers on that? You know, the estimate is that if Rotary stepped away, which is, I have to say, of all those organizations that I listed, we talked about, yeah. Rotary, we are the cheerleaders. We are, the, in a way, a spiritual, passionate leader in this effort. If we stepped aside, approximately 10 million cases of paralytic polio would come rushing back into the world. We live in a global environment. We travel from one place to the next. I can get to Japan in 11 hours. I can get to India in another eight hours. And I could be a carrier of the virus. And it could be spread all over the world again. We cannot give up. And we will not give up. And Rotary is committed to it. And John Germ, our new president, and at the Council of Legislation, as you know, right. has dedicated itself to having polio eradication as its number one objective. Yeah, and this is only the second disease ever that exactly. has been going to be eradicated from the world. Great efforts, something pretty outstanding. When we look back and we see what we've done and what we've accomplished, it's huge. But when we look at what could potentially happen if we were to walk away from this without finishing the fight, I think is one message that we have to send to the world and to Rotarians alike. Exactly. Because so many people see that number shrinking thinking that we have to reduce our efforts. You know, that's not the time that we let up. It's like when you're writing your thesis and you have a couple pages left to write, you don't quit. You don't quit. You don't ever quit. You can't you're gonna, quit. You're gonna go, or your bike riding like you used to do, <laughs> you don't quit with a thousand, you know, a hundred yards you left. You're quit. gonna go ahead and write with it. Right, right. So, well, it, well, thank you very much. Jim, thank you for sharing the experience, your time, um, and for all the work that you're doing for Rotary. We definitely appreciate that. With that, everybody, take a look at polio, polio eradication. Uh, see as fundraisers come through what you can do because it is still a disease that we are so close to getting rid of, yet it's going to take one more strong push to make sure that that does go away and people like Jim and myself will no longer be uh, having families afflicted with this disease. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Jim, thank, thank you for joining you, thank us. Thank you, Wade.